Jared Fletcher, who comes up against Daniel Gill in our main event on the evening. Jared, first of all, mate, how's the training been since you got back from overseas? Um, yeah, good. I uh, probably kicked off about three weeks ago back in serious training, so... Mate, it's always hard coming off a loss, but um, I'm keen as to get back in there and sort of get back in the winner, so... Interesting for you coming up against a bloke you've sparred so many rounds against. Uh, I guess you probably always knew this fight may come about one day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, me and Daniel are good mates. Uh, we've known each other for about sort of 12, 13 years. Um, done hundreds of rounds sparring together, so we know each other really well. And, mate, I'm sure it's going to be a cracker of a fight. You know, if our sparring's anything to go off, it's, um, it's going to be fall, but so it should be good. What do you expect to happen in this fight? You'd know pretty much how you measure up against Daniel having sparked so many rounds. So give us a prediction for how you think it will go you against Daniel Gill on the 3rd of December. Mate, it's going to be a, a high-paced fight. Um, sort of, yeah, I don't know what Daniel's going to do on the night, but uh, like I said, going off our spine, it's going to be sort of an intense sort of pace, and um, mate, the crowd's going to love it. And how do you think it finishes? Mate, I'm going out there to win. So like I said, it's going to be a really hard fight, um, but mate, I'm going to win this one. I did read over the last few days that you said that you do have a good opportunity to stop Daniel Gill in this fight. Do you, do you think that you could finish early? Oh, mate, um, I don't know where that come from. Um, mate, it's going to, like I said, it's going to be a tough fight. It, it's, I, I don't know what Daniel's going to do on the night. Um, I, I'm ready for whatever he throws at me and uh, Mate, like I said, it's going to be a high-paced fight, and uh, I'll come out to win. Okay, Joe, pleasure. You passed the microphone along to Daniel Gill. Uh, Daniel also coming back from his most recent fight, which was in the United States, up against Gennady Golovkin, and he's back here to fight against him. How many rounds do you think you have sparred against Joe Fletcher during your life, Daniel? Uh, to be honest, it would be you know, extremely hard to count. You know, we've you know, spent a lot of time together at the Australian Institute of Sport in Canberra. You know, we've done plenty of rounds back then, and you know, as professionals, we've spot a fair bit as well so I mean you know, we do know each other very well and uh, you know we, we know you know, plenty of little secrets and tricks and, and little things that you know, when you jump in with somebody that you, you don't know you, know you have to work that out early on in a fight and uh, you know with me and Jared you know we're gonna have to go out there and uh, you, we know our strengths and weaknesses uh, we're gonna have to take a few risks and uh, you know, just see if we can get rewarded for that. Pretty unfamiliar scenario for you coming off a loss into a fight. You've won uh, the vast majority of your fights. Uh, how will that affect your preparation? Does it make you train harder? Uh, definitely. You know, it, it's very frustrating losing. Um, you know, I, I guess yeah, there are certain things I can take away from that as well. You know, I, I know fighting you know, the best fighter in the world, um, you know, it, it puts me where I'm at. And I, I know, you know where I need to improve. And, uh, you know, I'd love the opportunity to fight a lot of again um, one day. But, you know, one step at a time. You know, Jared, you know, as we've spoken in the past, you know, we, we've sort of joked about it you know, after the sparring sessions before that. You know, we, we will have to fight at some stage. And, uh, you know, we are, we are good mates. Uh, we want it's time to jump in the ring. You know, that all changes. You did mention there uh, the possibility of fighting against Gennady Golovkin again. I guess the middleweight division at the moment, there's so many opportunities. What do you see as a possible next step should you get past Jared Fletcher? Where, where do you hope to be off to next? Uh, you know, that, that's a, a question for management. To be honest, you know, I, I, I'm just you know, taking one fight at a time, as always. Um, you know, if I, I, I get a job done, and I know I will against Jared, um, you know, I'm very confident. I'm going to you know, leave it in the hands of my, my team and they'll work out you know, what the next best move will be. You know? But I'm 100% for whatever they're driving. Um, what about this New South Wales up against Queensland team? I know you're a proud Tasmanian, but you've certainly been adopted here in New South Wales. Uh, you've been here for long enough to wear the blue jersey. It, it adds an extra bit of flavour, doesn't it? It, it does. You know, it's, it's a great thing. You know, having a guy like Alan McCard is you know, it's unreal. Um, you know, and, and to be part of that as well, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit honoured and uh, you know, I'll, I'll you know, hold my head up high and uh, you know, I guess now I am an adopted New South Wales person, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll fight that way too. Now, you mentioned that you have sparred all these rounds. So who gets the better of who in these, in these spars? It's been going on for, for a lot of years. Uh, do, do you get him or does he get it? <laughs> I mean, we, we, it is a bit up and down at times, you know. Sometimes Jared gets me, sometimes we get him. And, and that's what I'm telling you, like, you know, on the day, you know, if somebody has a bad day, you know, that, that's going to be the end of it. Um, but you know, it, it's going to be the person that wants to go out and uh, take a few risks, um, push himself a little bit harder, who has put in the hard work in the training camp. I mean, 
And I know Jared's going to be fit, ready, prepared, um, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm working my butt off. I know how important this one is for me, and uh, you know, I'm really focused. I'm, I know coming off the loss, it's very frustrating, and uh, it can't get you down, but I'm still motivated. I still want to win fights, and I still want to win world titles. It is a point of no return sort of fight. Losing this would be very damaging to the career of either of you. Um, and winning it in spectacular fashion would certainly help you a lot. Will you go out trying to stop Jared Fletcher? You know, to be honest, I never go out there with the intention of just knocking out somebody. And when it comes, it comes. And uh, you know, I, I just know I need to do my homework and uh, I know I need to you know, make sure I'm in the perfect condition. And uh, you know, if the opportunity does come up, you know, I'll be right there for it. Daniel Gill, uh, Graham, tell us about that experience over in America with Daniel last fight. How do you look back on the fight against Gennady Golovkin? Well, it was a fight we wanted. Daniel wanted to fight the best, and he is the best, Golovkin. But uh, when you go overseas and you know the sort of big machines against you, everything must fall into place. And I've got to say, it really didn't for us over there. There's only little things, and I'm not saying that we'd have won otherwise. But uh, certainly, sort of little things didn't go our way, and it doesn't help. Like, there was a four minute first round in that fight. This is a New York, you know, state boxing commission, right? Like, it meant to be the best in the world. It was a four minute round. And we told them when it's got over three, but they still did nothing about it. The actual head clash came at the end of that round. So he's got a bad cut. You know, for an extra minute for incompetence of the timekeeper and the officials there, which doesn't help. He trips on the cameraman's strap. You know, I've never seen that anywhere in the world. You know what I mean? The fact they let him sit up in the apron, you know what I mean, is a joke. But, right, there are excuses, but I just, you just need things to fall into place, and they didn't for us, you know what I mean? But, uh, like Daniel said, he fight him again, and, you know, we'd have to happily fight him again. But he is the best middleweight in the world, no mistake. Um, you've watched plenty of this sparring between Daniel and Jarrett. Uh, yeah. With that in mind, how do you see the fight going on the 3rd of December? I think, like both as Jarrett and Daniel say, it's going to be a high paced technical fight, but somewhere along the way, you've got to take risks. You've got to take out that comfort zone. You've got to surprise them, you know what I mean, to the opponent. So and they'll both be trying to do that. So I think it's a fan friendly fight, and it's a sort of crossroads fight for both of them, too. So I'm sure they both be putting everything in, but I look forward to it. Yeah, we all do. It is the 3rd of December over the road at the Horde Pavilion. As I mentioned, tickets through Ticket Tickets on main event television as well. So thanks everyone for coming along. Uh, there'll be plenty more promotion as we...